Fernie, thank you so much for joining me today. I don't think there's anyone better to talk about what attraction marketing is and how it can be applied to recruiting in your MLM business, your network marketing business. Yeah, attraction marketing is first and foremost a philosophy on how to attract business, generate customers. If your goal is to attract business partners like a network marketing distributor, a business builder, whatever the business objective is, it's just another way, another philosophy of achieving that outcome that's been proven time and time again across multiple businesses, multiple industries and niches over the past hundred years. So traction marketing really is a direct response approach. People might not know what direct response means. It's a type of marketing. Most of the time when we hear about marketing or advertising or what we've observed most of the time has been brand advertising. We see brand advertising all over in commercials, big companies spending millions of dollars to make sure they get their brand out there. Attraction marketing, or in this case, direct response marketing, it's a type of marketing that is more targeted, that doesn't require you to spend as a business owner a lot of money the way big companies do to promote their products. The big company approach brand advertising is more about just making sure that their brand is top of mind so that when you choose to want to buy a Coke, they've shown their ad so many times to you that it's top of mind when and if you decide you want to purchase a product like what they have. The problem with that type of advertising is, is extremely expensive. That's not feasible for the average Joe, the average business owner, brick and mortar, or even a network marketer. So direct response marketing is a style of marketing that focus rather than on branding, it focuses your message on attracting people based on their specific problems that they're having and the outcomes that you can help them achieve. So you actually have to have a target market in mind. Your target market could be, for example, if you know a common network marketing product is a weight loss product. So obviously the target market there would be people that are wanting to lose weight. Uh, another target market within that market could be someone struggling with their weight. They've tried everything. And that might seem like it's the same target market, but they're actually different. Somebody that's struggling with their weight for the first time and has never gone on any diet or has never bought anything is a different type of person than somebody who's actually invested in other products and tried a lot of different solutions. The latter of the two is somebody that's shown a willingness to want to invest in themselves. So that's an example of a target market. So if you have a weight loss solution as an MLM distributor, or let's say you have a very expensive weight loss solution, it might be a great solution, but might be more expensive than the average product or bundle out there, then you want to make sure that your messaging is reaching out and connecting with the people that have already bought a lot of different other solutions because they've shown a willingness to invest. Whereas trying to convince the new person that has entering that market that's struggling with their weight for the first time, that person might be harder to convince, might cost you more to enroll them as a customer, et cetera, if you're doing advertising or if you're doing social media marketing, it just might take more effort to get them over the finish line. But ultimately, what attraction marketing is, is it's having the and the who in mind, the person who you want to serve, the problems that they have, know the outcomes that they want, understand how that impacts their life. Then either do advertising, create social media content, or simply engage on social media and network with people in your target market, because those people are already primed to want what you have because they're actively seeking solutions to the problems that they're experiencing. So it's a type of marketing and it's been proven over and over again, in a lot of industries, we've just applied it to the network marketing profession because in network marketing, the alternative to doing any type of marketing or attraction marketing is actually sales. The approach that's commonly taught the traditional approach in network marketing is a sales-based approach. Even though you're constantly told in network marketing, it's not selling, it's sharing. That is not true. If it didn't require selling and the product sold itself, it wouldn't need you. You wouldn't need to be part of the equation. The company could just put the product on a shelf. People see the product and the product apparently sells itself. So people just see the product, they buy it from the shelf at, at any store, or they put a website up. Obviously that's not the case. So the product product does not sell itself. It requires salesmanship, but that's the reason you learn to prospect. That's the reason you learn to handle objections. That's the reason you learn to follow up. You learn scripts. All of the things I just described are things that salespeople learn to do. So maybe a network marketing salesperson doesn't need to learn sales the way somebody that's selling a $10,000 program needs to learn sales. That's a higher level skill set, but it's sales nonetheless. If it comes to the choice between doing sales and learning sales to build my 
my business and doing sales on a one-on-one -on -one basis without a target in mind where I just talk to everybody and strike up a conversation and basically manipulate that conversation through questions to see where my in is, where, where might they tell me something about themselves that would be the motivation for them to want to take a look at either my product or my business. Well, that's what salespeople do. With attraction marketing, we target and either create content or create advertising or network in groups of people that already are looking for something like what we have. Therefore, what we got to make sure is that we understand that type of person on a deeper level. And that's what we teach our students. We teach our students how to operate on social media, not from a sales approach or not from a prospecting approach. We teach our students how to do marketing and put content or advertising or simply engagement and networking with people that already want what you have because you know what's going on in their world. It's so interesting that there really is a difference between sales and marketing. And what I'm hearing you say is that in traditional old school network marketing recruiting strategies, you really focus on everyone is your prospect. Anybody with a pulse, just talk to all the humans, right? But in this approach, a more modern recruiting approach, you really focus and hone in on that target market where not everyone is your prospect. Right. Yeah. One thing I want to add to that, let's go back to the weight loss example, weight loss target market, because it's such a broad market, such a big market. A lot of people network marketing have products that can serve this market. Again, within that market, there's different types of people. There are the people that are overweight, but don't care about losing weight. Like they're just resigned to the fact that they are the way they are and they don't see it as a problem. They're unaware there's a problem or maybe don't have want to think about the implications of that being a problem in the future in their life. Then there's the people that are aware that they have a problem, but they've never actually, you know, maybe they're experiencing weight gain for the first time because of hormonal changes or something like that. And they're just wanting to do it on their own. They're like, oh man, I just need to exercise more. Or I need to eat less fat. And they're kind of just doing it on their own and they don't see a need to want to invest in either coaching or a product or a supplement or something to help them lose weight. So those are the problem aware people. So I talked about the unaware people, which basically unaware they have a problem, but they're overweight. The problem aware people are aware they have a problem, but they kind of think that they can figure it out on their own. And then there's the solution aware people that are people who have already invested in a lot of different solutions. They spent maybe thousands of dollars trying to solve this problem in their life. Maybe they've had success, but not the success that they want, or maybe it's been a yo-yo journey. So those different people, those are three different target markets markets, three different types of people. Let's say you have family members who are in the unaware crowd. They're overweight, but they have no desire to want to try to lose weight and they're perfectly happy the way they are. Imagine if you approach them with your weight loss solution and said, hey, John, I, you've been really fat for a long time. Like, have you ever thought of just, you know, I have a product that can really help you lose some weight. Are you open to trying it? That person's probably not going to have a very positive reaction because they didn't invite you at all. They didn't ask for your advice. They know you're immediately trying to pitch them something because you made an observation about them and you kind of insulted them in the process. At least that's how they perceive it. So they're not open at all. Just like the people you're trying to prospect that maybe are struggling with money, maybe they hate their job, struggling with their bills, but they've resigned themselves to the idea that that's just the way it is. You know, this is the life that we have. Got to do the best I can, maybe get that promotion with my job. And if you try to approach that person and prospect them with your business opportunity, well, their mindset is not open to a business opportunity. Their mindset is not open to making an income. And therefore, they're going to have a negative reaction, just like the person that's happily overweight has a negative reaction. And then there's the person who, like in the weight loss example, the problem aware person who is aware they have a problem, but they want to do it themselves. They want to figure it out themselves and they want to do it their way. And they're not open to paying anything. And they think all these weight loss things are kind of fads and a scam. I'm going to do this myself and exercise more and eat better. I know what I need to do. And transferring that example to people who want to make more money, they're aware that's a problem. They're wanting to do something about it, but they're also not open to your solution. They're not open to one of those MLM things. They want to make more money maybe by going back to school or just working overtime and make money that way. Or they're going to make money by driving Uber. And they're the ones that want to do it their way. They're not looking for your solution. They're not looking for a business even. They're just looking away from extra money, either from their job, either by going back to school or driving Uber, the things they already know and familiar with. And if you prospect them, approach them, hey, I got a great business opportunity for you. Or if you dupe them into a meeting and it turns 
turns out it's like you're duping them into viewing a presentation about starting a business. The idea of starting a business didn't even enter their mind. So they're not open either. And that's the reason you, if you don't understand the different levels of awareness in a the market, then you're going to hit a brick wall, even though you might be talking to people that actually do need what you have. But if somebody needs what you have, but they're not open, then you're going to create resistance, a negative interaction. They're going to get mad at you. Now, if somebody who's trying to lose weight and you have a conversation with them at some point and they say, man, I've been trying to lose weight forever. You know, I've tried this program, this program, nothing seemed to work. I'm kind of at my wits end. I don't know what to do. And you remember that conversation where they share and you may maybe ask them, are you looking to be given up or are you, are you still looking for a way to make those things a reality? Like, no, no, I'm definitely looking. I'm definitely open, willing to invest whatever I got to do to make it happen or do whatever I got to do to make it happen. If somebody has said that to you in the past or they say that to you currently, and then you go, well, John, I actually know of something that can help you that's actually gotten great results for me or for other people that I know. Would you like to hear more about it? And they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, tell me more. So that person who's already invested money in a lot of different programs or in invested effort in a lot of different programs has a different mindset. They're open. And because you are approaching them with their needs in mind, and they've expressed that they actually have these needs, well, they're going to be very open and be very keen. Just like somebody you've talked to says, yeah, I've been looking to start. I think I want to start a business. I've been looking at all these online programs or videos on people starting online businesses. It looks really cool. I just have no idea where to start, but I think I, I need to do something. I can't do this job forever. With that person, either if you remember they said that in the past, or if you are in a conversation with them, then you go, well, John, I'm actually working with some people on this online business. It might be something similar to what you've already been looking at, but I know this stuff, this is legit. I know quite a few people doing really well when they're working from home and doing it all on the internet. Would you be interested in learning more about that? And they're like, yeah, tell me more, send me the information, whatever I got to do. So now that person, because they already were searching for things and you said, well, I think I can help you with that too. Would you be open? That's a very natural way of matching someone's need to a solution because they actually have expressed that they're actively looking or have already tried a few things. And so what marketing does is it makes that process a lot more efficient where you can create content on social media or online, or you can do advertising that doesn't cost you a lot of money to reach those people that are already having that conversation with themselves. So I just described how you would do it on a one-on-one -on -one approach where you can use the attraction marketing philosophy to introduce or invite somebody where you're pretty sure that they're not going to have a negative reaction because the positioning is the way you would recommend a movie to somebody. If you know somebody likes action movies and you just watched an awesome action movie, then you're going to go, dude, I know you love action movies. You got to watch this movie that I just watched. And it's incredible. Now that person feels like you know them, you're taking their needs in mind. Or if you're talking to your female friend, I know you like romance comedies and I don't like romance comedies, but I just saw a romance comedy that actually was really funny. I think you'd like it a lot. And they're going to really appreciate that you're making that recommendation because you're putting it in the context of their needs. So when you're putting things in the context of someone's needs, they're going to be a lot more open. When you randomly invite people to things, especially if you're being deceptive, especially if you hide what it is that you actually are going to show them, then that's really awkward. And that's also what makes all these invite scripts and all the stuff that people teach in traditional network marketing. It's not natural. It's not how we naturally communicate with each other. What we do is for the people that we know are actively looking a solution and they've told you they want a solution to a certain problem. Whenever we come across something that might be able to help them, it's natural for us to reach out to them and say, hey, you remember the other day how you were telling me that you were struggling with X, Y, and Z. I think I found something that might be able to help you. Would you be interested in learning more about that? Or I just found something that dude is getting some great results for other people. I think it can help you. Are you open to that? And they're like, yeah. And they don't feel conned into that next step because they know what they're walking into. They know they're walking into basically learning more about how to solve their specific problem. And your approach is very much based on their needs. So if I was going to do network marketing, the more traditional way, I would do it that way because it's very authentic. I'm keeping the needs of the people that I know in mind. And if somebody that I know is very close-minded and they're pretty much set in their ways, I'm 
probably not going to invite them because it's just not worth my time. Even if there's like a minuscule chance that they might be interested or I might be able to convince them, it's not worth the effort. I'd rather focus on the people that are open, have expressed the need, and then I can use social media to actually reach as many people as I want by creating a message that connects with the people that are already having those type of conversations with themselves that are already looking for solutions to their problems that are already investing in other solutions to these type of problems. If it's in the context of a business opportunity, well, there's a lot of people seeking business opportunities online and there's a lot of programs that people are buying online. So that's where I would probably create content to reach those people if I was looking to recruit. The examples can go on and on, but the point is that rather than convince somebody they need what you have, just let them find what they already are looking for, meaning your solution, what you have. The trick then would be to find how does somebody find, if somebody is trying to recruit using this modern technique instead of the old school techniques, how do they find the people who are announcing they're looking for a solution? With attraction marketing, you don't know what conversation people are having in their head. And I think that's the reason old school network marketing still says everybody's your prospect, because you truly don't know what somebody might be thinking or slightly going through. So they might have this silent struggle with their health or their weight, and you don't know about it. So what old school network marketing is having you do is they're having you take a risk that maybe this person is actually interested in this, but you don't know. But the problem is that you're taking a chance. And if they have a negative response, you're compromising that relationship. The payoff might be there's a chance that they actually are secretly having this conversation in their head and that they might be open great. But then the downside is that they might have this very visceral negative response that now makes your relationship weird or it might hurt that relationship. So with social media, it allows us to actually break through and in some ways kind of break through what they're not saying and actually see what's in their mind. So for starters, if you did want to tap into your war market to launch your business, one, if you've never done any type of business, if you don't have entrepreneurial experience, and if you've never done network marketing before, I actually would not recommend starting with trying to recruit business builders for a couple of reasons. One, it's hard to do that because you have no credibility at all in business. So they're going to be like, Dude, you're flipping burgers. What are you doing talking to me about entrepreneurship? You know, leading with the business comes with the baggage of your history. So even if you're an accomplished person, well, they, they know all your flaws. They know all the things you've screwed up in your life. And, you know, it, it comes with all that baggage. So unless you have a background in business and network marketing or just that credibility, I wouldn't personally lead with the business because you're going to deal with a lot of rejection and get little results. What I would do in that situation, I would lead with trying to create retail customers especially because a product can be used. You can use it or you know people that have gotten results with the product. You can launch your business with a curiosity campaign on social media to your warm market, to people that are already interested. And you're not actually saying, hey, I started a business. I have this product. It does this. If you're interested, come buy it from me. That's not what you're doing. With social media, you want to create curiosity, starting with what conversation are people whom I want to attract having in their head and match what I share on social media with that conversation. I would create and design, of course, I can't go into the details to how exactly you would do that. So I'm keeping things very high level, but essentially I would teach my students and the leaders that I coach teach their teams to do a social launch, a warm market social launch strategy where they put out content on social media that announces to your audience that you started taking an interest in this certain area of the world, like health and wellness or something like that, where you're letting people know, hey, I've just found a newfound passion in the arena of health and wellness and improving my health. I've been struggling with these kind of issues lately. And I just finally have found some information and solutions that have really helped me a lot to alleviate this problem and improve in this area of my life. I know many of you might be dealing with the same challenges. So if that's something you're dealing with, then send me a private message. I'm happy to share what I'm doing. So that's a curiosity-based approach. That's more about experience that somebody is having. So if anybody in you're following can relate with that post, if they have similar problems and they want to do something about it, then they will reach out. Now they don't have to say anything to you. You're basically breaking the barrier of their mind and you're actually having your message enter their mind and match the conversation that they're having with themselves. And that then would cause them or motivate them to want to reach out and learn more about what you're doing. That's a cool way that doesn't compromise relationships of attracting and launching a retail 
scale business. So now from that launch, you can get a half a dozen, a dozen customers that immediately put you into profit. And you used attraction marketing because you allowed people to identify themselves as needing what you have and they were attracted to you and therefore they reached out and the conversation begins. And now those conversations aren't weird. Once you get past that point, if you're using social media, you can actually create content that platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and even YouTube will share and show to people. And that content, if it's designed in a similar way where it's focused more on people's experiences and their problems and their desire to fix solutions and there's value in that content, well, then that content is actually gonna be shown to hundreds, thousands, or even potentially tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of people. If it goes viral, it's gonna be shown to these new people that you don't know that are having that same conversation in their head where the message matches what they're thinking. And then they get curious and start following you, or maybe they reach out and now you've just attracted more people to you. And if you want to take it to the next level, if you don't want to create a lot or be bogged down by creating a lot of content, or eventually you get tired of creating content constantly on social media, then there's ways of doing advertising in a very low budget way to start with so that you can just run ads with a similar message where you're paying to have that ad shown to a lot of people and you don't have to be on the hook for creating content because you have content that you've created once that gets to be shown on an ongoing basis to as many people as you want for as long as you want. And those people then respond and get attracted to you and want to learn more about what you're doing. So that's how attraction marketing works. It's about, again, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, whether it's creating content or whether it's actually creating some sort of digital advertisement, you allow your message to penetrate someone's mind. And if it matters, matches what they're thinking, they're highly likely to respond. And if it doesn't match what they're thinking, they're going to just swipe and not be interested. And then the algorithm will learn what type of people would be most interested in what you have to share because the algorithm doesn't want people to swipe your content away. The algorithm wants people to actually engage with your content. So the Facebook algorithm, Instagram algorithm, TikTok algorithm, YouTube algorithm, and so forth actually want to show you stuff you like because they're in the game of making sure you stay plugged into their app. So if they want you to be using their app, then they want to make sure they show you content that you're actually interested in. Therefore, the content you're actually interested in will likely be things that you think about and that you care about, especially if it has to do with improving a certain area of your life. That's the reason attraction marketing works. It's a marketing approach. It's not a sales approach. The other benefit to attraction marketing is you can do it 100% from home, behind your laptop or from your phone, and it doesn't require you to hold any home parties, home meetings, or any type of those things. Those things can work, but they're just very time intensive. And especially if you're using a sales approach and you're using deception to try to get people to meetings or you're not really being transparent about what you're doing, I count the stories in network marketing about inviting people to dinner and then you kind of, you know, spring the plan on them or something like that. That's just weird and not natural. So there's going to be a lot of people who are watching this video who are aware of a problem they have. And those are the people who want to build and they want to recruit and they're interested in knowing more of the modern methods of recruiting on social media, and they're open to a solution, right? They've tried buying this course or they've this $7 course or that type of a thing. And so they're coming here to this video to hear you talk about how attraction marketing can create this stream of prospects who want what they've got, you know, who are looking for the solution that they're providing. So for those people who are interested in not feeling salesy, not spamming friends and family, who want to kind of maybe automate their digital recruiting, what would you say to those people? Well, I would first say notice how you found this content. And if you're listening to this point, we're about a half hour into this conversation and you're still plugged in and interested. This is an example of what I was just talking about as it relates to creating content where I'm talking about things that you're having a conversation about. I'm talking about the struggles of the traditional way of doing network marketing. And if you're thinking about, man, this network marketing thing is hard. And all of a sudden the conversation we just had just connected with something in your mind and piqued your interest. And now you're listening more and more. And the other important piece of content that we've done here in this piece of content that you want to do when you create content is you want to educate and add value. So I've explained the process of attraction marketing and how it works to attract people. Some of the different ways attraction marketing can be applied. And at that point, then people go, oh, that makes sense. So we're actually demonstrating to people right now how you would do this in a long format, like an interview or a podcast or a Facebook 
live. And so now we're at the point where, all right, Bernie, I'm right there with you. I want to solve these problems. What you're saying makes sense. So thank you for educating me because I didn't know what attraction marketing was, or I thought I knew, but now I have a better understanding. And now Lisa, very skillfully, has transitioned to saying, okay, where can they get this? And that's ultimately what you want to do in your content. You want to tell people what to do next so they continue to learn more. And my answer to that question about what do you do next? Okay, now I understand this makes sense. What do I do next? Well, there's no shortage of information out there. You can buy a lot of different eBooks and courses, you know, books that might teach you some of what I've talked about today or teach you a version of what I talked about today. The problem is that it's going to be up to you to make sense of all of it and arrange it into some sort of plan and strategy that makes sense. And even though most content promises to give you the strategy, most of the time what they give you is a lot of tactics. They give you, ah, you should be on TikTok and creating videos like these. And so then you go on TikTok and you create videos and you try to do what they're showing you. But there's something always lost in translation because oftentimes as human beings, we think we're doing what we're being taught. But then when an expert sees what you're doing, they're like, no, you're not really doing it. You're not really doing so. Like you're close, you're real close. But if you just tweak this little thing, right? right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I used to train martial arts for 10 years. And when I had my first class, and my master is teaching me to do a kick. He's like, do a kick like this. So do a front kick. You do it like this. And he does it perfectly. He looks like a statue at the end of his kick, right? And then I do my kick and I think I did it exactly the way he did it. And of course he does not agree. And so now he is the feedback where he basically grabs my leg and straightens it the way it needs to be and grabs my foot and forms it in the way it needs to be. And he's like, this is the way it needs to be. Now he's a martial arts master. So he's going to be very forceful in his feedback, but this is the way it's to be. You did it like like this. It's all crooked. This is the way it needs to be. Do it again. And then I'll try to do it again. And I still can't do it. I have to do it multiple times before I get it right. And eventually I get it right. And then we move on to the next technique. Right. And so we need that feedback. So courses are amazing for helping you to understand kind of like what direction you can go in. But time and time again, the people that use attraction marketing and do really well with it are people that actually seek mentorship and get mentorship from somebody like myself or somebody like the leaders that I've trained that are part of our faculty. Ultimately, mentorship is the key, just like any other six figure profession. And this is something that I think is actually insane that network marketing leaders and companies make the claim that anyone can create a six-figure income. Anyone can build a six, seven-figure business. Anyone could change your financial destiny in this profession. And that's only half true because they say, you don't need any special skills. You can come from any background. You can come in and crush this thing and do amazing. And again, that's only half true. Yes, that's possible. But the probability of you succeeding in that venture is going to be the same probability of you succeeding in any venture without mentorship, without going back to school, essentially. Are there computer programmers that are self-taught that learned all their skills on their own? Absolutely. There's some that are geniuses that can figure it on their own and can become the world's greatest hackers and never went to school and never spent an hour in a classroom. The grand majority of the world's best computer programmers went to school. They got an education. They were mentored by professors and TAs and tutors and were part of a systematic way that taught them the skills they needed to be great at this skill. People often look at Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk or others who dropped out of school and became billionaires. But these are different types of people. And notice how Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk hire the best of the best in the most elite schools in the world. They hire those people. They don't go, I don't care if you have a degree, you can come work at Tesla. And if you say you're a self-taught programmer, no problem, come on in and work for us. They'd be crazy. None of their stuff would work, right? These are people that are outliers. They might have dropped out of school. But I bet you the grand majority of the people that work for them are graduates from some of the best mentorship programs, i.e. universities in the world. And that goes the same for any six-figure profession. If you want to make a six-figure income, well, you need a six-figure skill set. And in order to get that six-figure skill set, someone needs to mentor you. So that's what I advise you. Be willing not only to find a mentor, but very likely if you're going to have a mentor that's going to give you the structure and the support in a systematic way that you need, you're going to need to invest in a mentor. And if you want to build a six figure income or a seven figure income, like it is reasonable to believe that you're going to have to invest in your education to learn that. And I think most network marketers or many network marketers have been convinced into believing that they don't need any type of special skill training in order to hit it out of the park. And they constantly use these outliers, these weird people that are super self-disciplined, 
They can learn everything they need to learn. They fail quickly and are tenacious and overcome. And they're able to make a crazy income where they say, yeah, I didn't go to school. No, no, no. I never paid anyone to mentor me. Everything I I, I was here and now I'm a millionaire and I got these cars and you can do it too. Well, those are outliers. That's not a normal person. And I can tell you for a fact that I've created, I've made tens of millions of dollars online. And I'm also, if you guys don't know, I'm an MIT graduate. So I would say I'm probably at the bottom of the rung in terms of the people that went to MIT in terms of intelligence, but I'm still, I guess you could say I'm still pretty intelligent. Like I'm still a pretty smart dude. I say so humbly. And I couldn't figure out how to do this network marketing thing and even the attraction marketing thing on my own. I actually invested over $90,000 in a lot of different courses, books, eBooks, you know, little things here and there, even went to events. I chased every shiny object. And the last thing that finally ended up working for me was I actually kind of like bit the bullet and invested in a mentor, somebody that was willing to work with me one-on-one -on -one to help me work through all the, everything. It's kind of crazy. I already had all the knowledge because I had invested $90,000 in like the hundreds of courses and I went through all of them, but I just, I didn't, I wasn't able to implement it in an effective way. And I had no feedback as to whether I was doing it effectively or not. Well, I need a strategy. Somebody needs to give me a strategy to know that I'm on the right track so that I don't get self-conscious and doubt myself. And then all of a sudden stop and try something else. So that reassurance that I'm on the right track too the feedback to correct what I was doing so that I can continue to improve. And most importantly, what mentorship gave me, it gave me the permission to ignore everything else that is out there because there's so much noise. There's so many gurus or so many shiny objects. That actually was the most important thing because it actually simplified my life so much. And within nine months of actually finding a mentor, I went from making no money to making almost $700,000 in a single month. It's incredible. So I want to ask an important question right on this topic before I forget it. And that's this. What do you say to the person watching this video who's like, invest in a mentor? Why did I join my upline? My upline is my mentor. They're going to teach me everything I need to know. They know my company better than you. They know my products better than attraction marketing. What would you say to that person? Well, if your upline was trained by us, then I'd say you're more right than you're wrong in terms of like they providing you the right skill sets and the right systems to support you. But they're not going to mentor mentor you one-on-one. -on -one. They might, they're going to provide you a systematic way of mentoring you that helps to bring you up to, to give you the best probability for success. If they've worked with us, because that's what we teach them to do. They teach them the right strategies, but then create the support structure to be able to mentor you and give you the skills that you need at different stages of your journey. So the most network marketing organizations don't do that effectively. They don't give you a structured way of learning and elevating your skills at different stages. In fact, most network marketing organizations teach the same thing to everybody, no matter what their skill level is. And it almost becomes like a broken record. And especially if the strategies that you're being taught are not, don't feel authentic to you, if they feel slimy or creepy, or if it's going to cause you to compromise relationships. Well, at that point, you know that the tactics you're being taught are probably not going to work for you because there's resistance already inside of you that they're not going to work for you. So that's number one. Number two, let's say the tactics or the strategies you're being taught actually are okay with you. You're okay doing those things. Well, the next thing is your upline, especially if they're really successful, probably has a few thousand people on their team. And for them to mentor you one-on-one -on -one is highly unlikely. If you're lucky, you might get a conversation with them once in a while, maybe. So they have to be really good at creating a support structure and systems so that their organization uses those systems to properly mentor you and educate you. And notice how what I'm describing sounds a lot like a university. You know, you have the president, you have the deans, you have the professors, you have the TAs, and that all the people in the pyramid play a different role in supporting you and elevating you. And it's only when you get to the PhD level that you get to work with the professor directly and work with them one-on-one. -on -one. But until you get to that higher level, you're going to be working with the TAs. And so they have to create a system a structure and a strategy so that all that works together and it's well coordinated. Most network marketing teams and organizations don't have that either. Now, if you're being taught the wrong strategies and you have resistance, you don't have the structures in place to support you in this hierarchical way. They may say you have a system. They may say we will mentor you, but they're not really creating the environment for mentorship. And so that's the reason I had to go outside of my first company and go look for something else. I actually found my mentors, Mike and Tim, who the founders of the company that I'm now a partner in, they created this training company with the intention of creating a school for network marketers who wanted to build online. And that's exactly what it's become. It's become a school with a, 
systematic structure to support you where we have not just one person, but a team of leaders, a team of six-figure earners, seven-figure earners who are our faculty, who are supporting our students at different levels and different stages of their journey. And eventually as part of that journey, people eventually have the opportunity to be able to work with me directly one-on-one. -on -one. That's not where they start, but that's where eventually it kind of leads. And that's the reason I'm working here with Lisa. Lisa's a leader. And she asked me, we just got off a coaching call that we did for a couple hours before this interview. And so we did some coaching with her and now she asked if we can do this interview. I'm like happy to do the interview. Would I likely be doing this interview with somebody that's brand new, has no experience in network marketing and not a leader? Probably not because it won't be effective for them and it won't be effective for me. In this case, it's effective because she's a leader. She has an audience. I get to get my message out there. And the other part of it is she gets to you know create content that adds value to her audience as well. And we have this one-on-one -on -one relationship because she's worked through our mentorship program and gotten to that point where she's crushing it. She's actually been a student of ours who's progressed the fastest in our community. It's just incredible how quickly she's gone through all of our curriculum and our content and our training. So that's kind of what will happen in an MLM organization if you have the right skills that you're being taught and the tactics. And if you have the right structure, eventually you will get to work with your head honcho upline one-on-one, -on -one, but you need to prove yourself and certain things need to happen before that happens. But most MLM teams, companies don't have that from my experience. And I went searching and the final piece of the puzzle was choosing to engage in a mentorship relationship with those people and go through the process that they recommended to achieve the success that I did. And the success was like a hockey stick growth. Every single stage in my business, I look for new mentors that can elevate me in a hockey stick approach from where I'm at. If I feel like I'm flatlining for a while, well, it's because I'm missing something. I don't know something. And there's likely somebody out there that does know what I need to know. And I don't just go to networking events and pick people's brains or buy courses or read books. I do those things too but that's not what's going to elevate my business. What's going to elevate my business is actually engaging with the people that are where I'm at or where I want to be so I can get where they are. And usually it's going to cost me money to, to get some of their time. Of course. Yeah, it makes sense, right? So when you look out at the landscape of the top earning network marketers, right? The people in the industry who just seem to succeed at building big organizations, recruiting people who are business builders, who are really serious, like-minded people. They have one thing in common, don't they? They all come back to you. Well, I'll say not all and not just to me. So first and foremost, if someone has built the old school way, the traditional way, then I did not mentor them. So if they use a more sales approach strategy that they learned that somewhere else and they were willing to push through the rejection, the negativity, and in some cases do things that were in alignment with their authenticity, their integrity, even well, maybe sometimes, not always, you know, there's a way to do the traditional approach in an authentic and honest way. But oftentimes there's so many things that are taught that are just like read the instructions for what to do. And you're like, people are actually taught that. So those people are not trained by me. I don't teach people scripts or this is what you say. I don't teach that stuff. But if they're doing attraction marketing, if the people that you see that have these omnipresent social media brands all over the place, like if you start searching for network marketing training and all of a sudden you find all these people that are leaders in network marketing all over social media, you have these big, big brands on talk, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. I'd say about over 90% of them are either my students or students of my mentors, or they're the students of our students or the students of the student students or so on and so forth. Marina Simone is an example of somebody who I actually counted how many generations away she was from who mentored her and then who mentored that person and then who mentored that person. And it was like eight people away. It's pretty cool. Like in that, in that progression and that kind of like genealogy, you know, there were people like John and Nadia Melton, Ray Higdon, and some of Ray's students as well and other people and it was kind of cool seeing like all these people that we mentored or who were mentored by people we mentored eventually got to marina and she was she got the benefit of what we taught with ever having to work directly with us so that's what i say if you're part of a company that where the leaders are students of attraction marketing and they're doing attraction marketing and they're teaching you strategies that are actually enjoyable and you look forward to doing then they're likely our students students are students of the students for our student students or so on and so forth and you're in a great place. 
Now, does that mean that you absolutely don't need to get third-party mentorship from like an organization like ours? No, it's like, if you choose to do that, then you're giving yourself even a bigger edge because now you can go straight to the source of all things that are attraction marketing because attraction marketing was actually introduced to the network marketing space in a big way in 2005 by one of my mentors, Mike Dillard. And his mentor, Tim Irway, has been building network marketing businesses online since 2001. So these online building strategies strategies have been used and employed for well over 20 years. It wasn't until 2005 where it exploded as a movement. And it took about 10 years after that, before it started to become accepted in network marketing, there was a lot of resistance and negativity by most companies and organizations and leaders because they just didn't understand it because it was so radically different from the what they taught and did. But now you see it all over the place. You can't get away from it. And all the people, all the big leaders, old school leaders who previously were railing or just not even talking about attraction marketing and teaching you scripts and prospecting, all that stuff, you'll notice that now they're not being negative about it anymore. And they're interviewing the people that they used to lambast because now they want like, Marina, how did you build your business on social media? Whereas like, you know, 10 years ago, they were talking crap about what we were doing. So I think we've changed some hearts and minds and there's still a ways to go. There's still a lot of people being taught strategies that I feel like are inauthentic, out of integrity and slimy and icky, whatever label you want to give it. But, you know, we're definitely changing the industry. My mentors specifically, Mike and Tim, their ripple effect across the profession has been massive. It's been the butterfly effect. It's taken about 15 years for it to take hold in a significant way, but I'm glad we're here. And Lisa, you're an example of another generation of students who are crushing it. You know, in network marketing, lead generation isn't really covered all that much by uplines and it's not a conversation that the company itself is having. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a trend that I'm seeing where people are actually buying leads. Now, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about how attraction marketing can help with lead generation as far as recruiting goes without buying leads, because I'm not somebody who is a proponent of buying leads. I think it's a big mistake. Absolutely. Yeah. Buying leads, basically what that means is you're going to be cold calling people whom you don't know. So even if those leads were generated in a way that was as an integrity as possible, meaning those are people that actually did request to learn more about a business opportunity or work from home opportunity, they actually did fill out a form somewhere. Very likely they probably forgot they filled out that form or where it was a fleeting moment where they filled it out and then wouldn't be able to remember they filled it out. A minority of the people will be able to remember that they filled it out, but then you're still a random person that's calling them. And very likely that lead has been sold to a few other people as well. So that person has probably received quite a number of calls. And so one, it is very hard to find a lead vendor that will give you leads that actually have not been resold multiple times over and over again. It's a part of this industry that's full of sharks that are looking to just make money and siphon your money by selling you leads. And they promise you the world, best leads in the world. These people actually requested about a business opportunity. But then when the leads have been sold 18 times, well, that person has already received a bunch of calls from a bunch of people and they're like, stop calling me. So first and foremost, you might just get junk leads that are going to get you nowhere fast. Then what's better than that is they actually did request information, but don't remember it. The few that do remember it, while well, they've already talked to a lot of other people. So now you're competing with all the other people in terms of like my opportunity is better. Oh no, you shouldn't go with them because of this, whatever. Now you're like getting into that game. So in order for you to actually do well with cold calling, one needs to be the year 1995, number one. <laughs> number two is you need to have the sales skills of cold calling to be able to break through that, to eventually actually get somebody's interest and pique their interest enough to keep them on the phone for you to get your message out in in there so that they actually are interested and you can convert them ultimately to whatever you're trying to convert them to. That is such a hard thing to do. I know people who are experts at doing that, but with the internet age, it's actually become a lot harder and harder to do that. People have a lot of spam filters on their phone. If they don't recognize your number, they're not going to answer. People are accustomed to texting. And so for the most part, even if you know how to cold call, and even if you know where to buy leads, it's going to be just a fool's errand. You're going to go down a path that's not going to produce your results. And then not to mention the whole duplicate this now. How do you duplicate that and teach that to other people? And look at the reaction they're going to have on their face when you tell them, hey, so you're going to buy leads and you're going to cold call these people. And you're like, what? <laughs> Oh, that. 
everything I've shared up into this point about attraction and marketing, attracting people through networking, attracting people through content or attracting people through eventually doing advertising like we teach. These are people that are responding directly to what you put out there as an individual, meaning my content or my ad or me engaging with somebody on social media. Well, they're engaging with me. They're engaging with a real person and them reaching out and saying, hey, Fernie, I'd like to learn more about what you're doing or I'd like to learn more about how you got rid of your acne. That was an incredible story that you shared. How did you do that? Well, now that's a much warmer lead. And that's somebody that is more likely to convert. And you don't have to be a superstar salesperson or know any scripts in order to convert that person because that conversation has already started from a place of like, I need, I probably need, or I'm interested in what you have. Great. Let me show it to you and show you how it works. That's a much easier close. As long as you're is not a, a grumpy person with poor social skills, <laughs> then you're probably going to convert that person. And it's an authentic conversation. It feels natural. They reached out. They're not weird. They're not waiting for the shoe to drop. They probably know it's going to cost money because you don't magically get rid of acne without doing something to your face or whatever it is, whether it's lose weight, whether it's make extra income. So generating leads is awesome if they're your own leads and if you generated them, because when you generate your leads, when you attract your leads and eventually in the more advanced portions of what we teach at Attraction Marketing, we show people how to build their own email list. So every new email is somebody that actually wants to hear from you and has requested information to learn more about what you have. Well, those are people that are exclusive to you. Those leads have not been resold over and over again. They opted into you. They have bought into you because they want to hear more about what you have to share. So those are the only leads I would ever buy is leads that I personally advertise, either spent time to create content or I spent money to create my own ads to attract. Those are the only leads that I would endorse. Yeah, it's like a self-generating lead, right? I think a lot of people end up not wanting to get into network marketing, not wanting to recruit, not wanting to sell product because they're afraid. They're afraid of rejection. They're afraid of feeling spammy or salesy. And what I love about attraction marketing, and I think this is one of the main reasons why you left engineering as a profession and moved over. Well, when you moved over to network marketing, if I'm remembering your story correctly, you wanted out of the nine to eight hustle, not even the nine to five, yeah. but the 9 a.m. to the 8 p.m. And then you found network marketing, but it, it didn't feel good to you, right? It didn't feel natural. It didn't feel authentic. What you were being asked to do didn't align with who you were, your core value. Right. So, you know, I think that really a lot of people can relate to your experience. Yeah, I wanted out of the nine to five. My background, my story is I grew up very poor but in a loving home. We lacked money, but we didn't lack much else. I was very fortunate in that way. I grew up in a really tough neighborhood where there were a lot of gangs and a lot of stuff going on that you wouldn't want your children to be around, but I was around those things. But fortunately, I was I grew up in a great family structure where the grand majority of the time I made the right decisions. One of those things that I did really well was I did really well in school. And I had the good fortune of going to MIT and I didn't even know what MIT was when I applied to it. I was a really good student and they sent me some envelopes and things for me to fill out. But MIT was kind of prospecting me. They sent me stuff in the mail as well as other universities. And I went to this environment where by the time I got to MIT, I knew what it was. The most elite technical institution in the world. Man, they talk about what makes MIT work in addition to just having uh, amazing technological resources is they brainwash the crap out of you about how you're going to change the world. They sell the dream better and bigger than anybody else. And it's like, you guys are MIT students. You graduate here. The world is your oyster. You're going to be able to anything. People start companies, startups. We have Nobel laureates that change the world that come out of here. And that's the institution you're in. And you're like, your life is set. You're sold this dream where you expect to come out of there with this, like, I'm not settling for just any job. Now, I wasn't aware of what was happening. I just like, where you're programmed that you're the best, you're the best, you're the best. And also they have the academic rigor to match that mindset. So when somebody graduates from IT, they really truly expect their life to be amazing. And when I graduated, I went to work in the aerospace space industry, working in basically corporate America, but working on defense projects for the military through a private company. It didn't matter that it was top secret space stuff for the government or that I had security clearances. Ultimately, I did the same thing most people that did is I got up really early in the morning when I didn't want to. I would drive through traffic at least one, do an hour and a half hours every day. I'd be dozing off while driving to work because I was tired all the time because I woke up early. I'm not a morning person. And then I had to work eight hours and then another hour and hour 
to two hours driving back home. And the work itself wasn't very inspiring to me. And it was because it's government oriented. It was mostly paid work. And literally within two days of being at my job, I was like, I do not want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> this is a big disappointment from what MIT sold to me. So I got to thank MIT because they created a vision for my life that was not going to be fulfilled by my job. Therefore, I needed to find something else to do. So for two years, I was looking for something different, something else to do. And I didn't know what that was. I went back to school. I went to graduate school at USC and actually was getting straight A's, which is breezing through it. Compared to MIT, USC was easy. But I was conned into an opportunity meeting and I hated everything about what was presented at that meeting. I thought I was going to a meeting to learn about starting some sort of Silicon Valley startup, which was a lie. And there were engineers at the meeting, but they started drawing circles on a board and then eventually it looked like a pyramid and then I actually asked this is one of those pyramid things and I was very upset I hated everything that I was shared at that meeting I couldn't wait to leave the only reason I ended up signing up was because I was like well shit I need to I want to I need to get out of my job I can't stand being there one more day and no one else is offering me another opportunity and it seems like going back to school is just going to get me deeper into stuff that I don't want to do anymore so I gave it a shot that the only reason I joined network marketing was because it was the only door that was presented to me that I I can open that maybe, maybe small chance that might lead to this bigger vision for my life that had been painted for me at MIT. I'm glad I opened that door, but I had to go through the equivalent of MLM Navy SEAL training because I joined an, a very traditional MLM company who taught all the old school strategies, all the very deceptive salesy approach. I oddly enough was pretty good at those things because I was coachable because I was that motivated. Again, my vision, my motivation drove me and I was willing to compromise my integrity to achieve that vision, but that only lasted so long. Eventually, Eventually that ate away at me and I couldn't do it anymore. After doing that for nine months and doing reasonably well doing it the old school way, I ended up finding attraction marketing and I found my mentors while I was searching online, browsing the internet. At that point, I think I was just browsing the internet because I was procrastinating because I was basically thinking about quitting, but I'm not a person that quits very easily. Fortunately, I found an ad that was being run by my mentors and I found their website. I opted in. I bought a little book that it took a week for that book to be delivered to me. And then when I opened it and read the book, I devoured it and I read it over and over again. I was like, I, this is amazing. I want to do this. And that, that changed my life. That's when I found my mentors and a strategy that actually worked that I wanted to do, that I was excited about doing. And I understood how it would lead me to the vision of the life that I wanted. I wanted to have time freedom, financial freedom. I wanted to be able to travel without being tied to a location to make a living. If I can work from my laptop, that's perfect. This industry, but more specifically, attraction marketing gave me that opportunity and I took full advantage of it. And what I hope, what I'm hoping is that there is someone or a few people watching this very video who are thinking about quitting, but don't want to quit. They don't want to give up. They have that vision for their life. They know it's possible because they see all these other leaders doing it, that this helps them exactly the way your mentors helped you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's only so long you can hit it your head against the wall before you knock yourself out. Or say uh, there's a better way. Yeah, it's like there's got to be a better way to knock this wall down than using my head, you know. And so you probably need a different tool. So the wall is not the problem. The obstacle is always the same. It's like use a different tool and a different strategy. That's what I did. At that point is when the Internet started in the mainly in the mid 90s. But then by the 2000s, there was so much information and there was so much information about companies. There was so much negative negativity about especially the biggest companies online that it was so hard to recruit people because when you presented to them they did their own research and would search on Google and find all these people that were talking negatively about XYZ company and then that person wouldn't join or wouldn't buy because they don't want to be associated with this thing that has scammed all these other thousands of people according to the internet the internet broke old school network marketing and you can't fix it it's permanently broken yeah. you just got to be super resilient and super stubborn if you're going to make traditional network marketing work. But why would you want to when there's a strategy that makes it a lot more efficient, a lot easier? Easier doesn't mean you don't have to learn real serious skills. It just means you you're able to do it in a more efficient way. Just like you, in order to send somebody a message, you no longer write a letter to them and put it in the mail. You send them a text. It's a different way that's become far more efficient and superior to the old way. And duplicatable. So you can actually teach people how to succeed, how to recruit on social media using strategies and tips that feel good and authentic and that 
they look forward to actually doing with a lot less yeah. rejection. You may, that's right. Here's a secret to duplication. Because I talked about systems, structure to support people, giving them the right strategies. But the most important thing to, for duplication, if you really want it to work, is not the systems are important, absolutely. But at the base level, what you teach your team to do has to be something they actually like doing and look forward to doing. Building the business needs to be enjoyable, especially in this profession where we're dealing with people who are not entrepreneurs yet. Well, they're in transition. They want to be entrepreneurs, but they don't yet think like entrepreneurs. So the process has to be enjoyable for them and they have to feel like they're getting value and they're growing in the process of doing this. If the process is making people feel inauthentic or out of integrity, or it's causing them to upset their friends and family, well, that's reducing the probability that they're actually going to stick with it. You know, they got to enjoy the process of building the business that is going to create natural organic duplication. And then when you layer on top of that effective systems to support that team, then you can grow like a monster, like many of our students have. Yeah, it's so true. How many times do we hear divorce the results and marry the process? But who wants to marry a process that makes them feel like shit? Right. <laughs> they're being rejected and they're embarrassed and they're afraid to reach out. And they, they can see that every time they approach this person, the, the person's kind of like running away because they think they just associate you with being spammy. Who wants well, I mean, to do that process? Well, no. just like you marry somebody that, you know, you initially marry somebody that, okay, I get in a relationship, I marry them. But then as you get to know more, as like you do, you spend more time with them, you realize I really don't like this person. And initially in the beginning, it's easier to stay in the relationship. But as it goes on and on, it gets harder and harder. So it's kind of like, almost like you're marrying something to do it for the long Long term, So don't make any compromises around if you don't like the process, then don't marry that process. Just like you wouldn't marry somebody you don't really, really, really like or really, really love. So it's kind of a similar thing. I kind of injected marriage into there as an example. I hope I didn't butcher it, but I really like what you said. And, you know, somebody once told me, a mentor once told me that vision, having a strong vision, like I described with that MIT, helped me create a vision for my life of time freedom, financial freedom, et cetera, definitely pulls you. It definitely is something that will motivate you to do things you normally would not do or the average person wouldn't do. So that's a critical part. But if no vision is, unless you're a sociopath, no <laughs> vision is strong enough to pull you through stuff you don't really feel authentic or out of integrity doing. So you can do it for a short while doing things you don't like doing or doing things that you think are unethical or just inauthentic. You can do it for a short little while if you have a strong enough vision, but eventually that will break the vision because the process sucks. Right. Both vision and process have to be something you look forward to. They have to you align. Look, you have to align and you have to look forward to both. Look forward to the work you're doing every day and look forward to what the outcome is going to be. Not. I'm going to suck it up and do this shitty thing right now so that I can get that really awesome thing later. Well, if that awesome thing later is a few years down the line, you're eventually going to demotivate yourself and you're going to procrastinate because you really don't want to do the shitty thing you got to do right now. Yeah. Yeah. Bernie, thank you so much for this, for your time and for talking about all of the things. And I really appreciate it. You're very welcome, Lisa. It's a pleasure working with you. And obviously, if people want to know more about how to, learn more about attraction marketing and what we do here and what Lisa and I are involved in. I'm sure Lisa will provide a link somewhere where this is posted down below in the description or wherever you can go there and get some more information and learn more. And hopefully I get to see you in our community and I get to personally work with you.